Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins. Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 103. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Doing great. Good. Mm. Having a nice summer? Absolutely. It's hot and steamy, just the way I like it. Yeah, cool and rainy here. Oh my gosh, our heat index hit like 110 yesterday. Wow. Yeah, way cool. Wow. That's that's where you put on a new shirt and it just sticks to you. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Uh, exactly that's where you start watering the flowers twice a day <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's exactly. pretty hot yeah <laughs> but i welcome it because last year was cold nothing would grow it it's just, yeah we've kind of ch- swapped places this year haven't we we sure have Complete we have polar you opposites. guys are up there freezing and yeah and last year we were just baking it was unreal how hot it was last year so, oh my gosh. Yeah. What are we talking about today? Well, we have to start out with a terrible, sad story. Another shooting. Yes. And the another. Capital Gazette. Now, that is a newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland. It's very close to D.C., so they cover some of the D.C. politics, but primarily it's local stuff. You know, it's a starving paper. Right. It's one of the first papers in the United States. Uh, began in the 1880s. Wow. Um, they've been struggling ever since, you know, the Internet has taken over more and more news. Right. And, and then in 2008, yeah, in 2008, a lot of these publications had to cut back. Yeah. And they try and try to put extra money into covering local events like high school sports, you know, city council meetings. Right. Things that aren't syndicated. And they struggle to do that. And because they struggle to do that, they have very little to no security in their buildings. So... Uh, a guy, there's two doors that went into the building. A guy blocked off one of them, and he went in and started shooting. Five reporters, journalists are dead, two injured. Now, the two injured were superficial-type injuries, like broken glass. Right. Um, because he shot to kill. The cops were there, bless their hearts, in 60 seconds. Wow. Amazing. Or he would have shot everybody up on sight. Right. Now, the suspect was, is still not cooperating, did not cooperate yesterday. Nevertheless, they did learn that he had sued the newspaper for defamation back in 2011. So he certainly had an axe to grind. Right. This so, is revenge. That would be the MO. Now, it, it's not clear yet why, why they wrote a story on him that he didn't like or whatever, but it is revenge. But our hearts, prayers, thoughts, whatever we got, go out to the families. One of the journalists on her Facebook page said she was the mother to the best kid in the world. Wow. And if that doesn't tug at your heart, yeah, you need a heart. Yeah. Because that's sad. Um, it is very sad. Yeah. All these shootings are sad, but that's... Um, Bless their hearts. Yeah, it touches home. Yeah, it does. It really does because you have to be careful when you say things on a day-to-day basis that, you know, there might be people that don't like what you say. Yeah. Um, I, for one, used to feel very comfortable about speaking my mind because I certainly never thought about hurting people. I didn't try to hurt people, and usually I tend to be more self-deprecating than anything else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah for sure. anymore, you have to be extra vigilant yeah. about what you say and do and who knows where you live, where you are. Right. No different than driving nowadays. It's pretty scary. 
gosh, that's really scary. <laughs> really scary. Oh, in a town like this, that's super scary. I'm less afraid to drive in St. Louis that has a population of about 30 times what it is here. Yeah. But at least people know how to drive there. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess for some, it's the end of the world. Uh Uh-oh. As they know it. Because Trump gets the chance to name another Supreme Court judge. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's going to go over like a lead balloon. Oh, my gosh, that is not going over well at all. Okay, he put Gorsuch in Scalia's place. Right. Already Gorsuch has not been as right-leaning as we all thought he was going to be, which is good. That means he's going by the Constitution. Right. Which is what we should all want the judges to do. Go down the center, yeah. Exactly. You know, try to understand what the brilliant, and I do say brilliant, forefathers, they weren't perfect, but they were brilliant when it came to the Constitution, intended the meaning to be. Now, I, for one, really would love to believe that the Constitution is a living thing, meaning that it changes with times. But the truth is, it's not. Right. Okay? So, we really want candidates that go with the Constitution. Now, way back when, in the 80s, when Anthony Kennedy was put in place by Ronald Reagan... Right. There was a candidate before him that was totally humiliated. So when you hear the term, you got borked. (laughs) That was named after a would-be Supreme Court justice that got borked. (laughs) I've heard that. By Congress and the Senate, okay? Yeah, I've actually heard that before. I never knew where it came from. Yeah. Anyway, Anthony Kennedy is going to retire at the end of July, and Trump could theoretically make things a lot more right-leaning. Now, Anthony Kennedy was the split vote. He was believed at the time when Reagan put him in there to be a more conservative justice. He wasn't. So I think everybody needs to settle down on the left. Everybody on CNN and MSNBC is absolutely going berserk saying this is the end of Roe versus Wade and that abortion will not be legalized anymore. Oh, bull. Bull. Right. Nobody's going to take it away. I mean, even if they want to, they won't because they have thoughts of close hangers. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to take away abortion rights. They wish they could, and they like talking about it, but they're not going to overturn Roe versus Wade. Right. It's all just speculation and the left tossing just at the fan, basically. It, it is because, you know, what are they going to talk about? They don't have a platform. Yeah. And you know what? They better get one fast because November midterm elections are coming up fast. Think about it. We're going to be at July. Is that like Sunday or Monday, the 1st of July? Uh, Sunday, I believe. Hello. Yeah, I mean, you're talking July, August, September, October, four months. Right. Four full months before midterm elections. That's wow. not much. No, man, that's coming fast. And before, uh, somewhere around the 10th, uh, pr- the president's going to leave for Europe, and he wants to have his nomination out there for the Congress to start borking. <laughs> to <tell laughs> start borking people. Borking, yeah. <laughs> so it should be good. It should yeah. be interesting. Yeah. It's much CTV at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the heat is on. Remember Peter Stroke, the one half of the FBI lover duo? Yeah, the guy with zero credibility, that guy? Exactly, and I think it was last time we said that over the weekend, last weekend, he said, Oh, I want to testify. I want to tell my side of the story. And, of course, the congressional committees go, Super great. How about Thursday? <laughs> And he says, super great, I'll be there. Well, he was there in Bari, but for the most part, he didn't answer most of the questions. Mm, Not because he pleaded the fifth. He said that it was classified. Now, he is in a closed-door session with people with security clearance. Right. I think, though, the most damning thing is Goldblatt, who is the House, judiciary chairman he said that for the 11 hours that stroke testified he was less less than believable (laughs) 
Well, yeah, they had to know he had no credibility before he testifies. Hell yeah! Wow, okay. Well, I wonder what actually uh, happened behind those closed doors. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. I don't know, but yesterday a little bit seeped out because you had Rosenstein in an open door session with Congress along with Rick. Now, Rosenstein is the second in command at the DOJ, you know, um, Sessions, the, the number one guy has recused himself with all things Russian and basically Hillary. I don't understand understand why when Rosenstein really has more of a conflict of interest, but that's another story for another show. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then you had Ray, who is the Trump appointed replacement for remember him? Kobe. Right. Okay, so yesterday they kind of grilled him and started one of the committee members said to Rosenstein said why did you tell Stroke not to talk to us about the Russian probe? And Rosenstein said, I didn't say that. And the <laughs> committee member said, well, Stroke said you said it. I mean, these guys can't tell the truth if they have. I mean, who's lying? Who's telling yeah, the truth? Yeah, wow. Anyway, it got nasty yesterday with Rosenstein and Ray. I mean, Ray, not really Ray, because Ray was kind of sitting there grinning the whole time because, you know, he's not in trouble. Right. Rosenstein was getting the hell beat up. Hmm. Again, must see TV. Yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, talk about crazy nutheads. Maxine Waters is not the only one out there that's crazy. There are others. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mostly celebrities, actors, actresses, singers, songwriters, politicians on the left, especially if they're left of the left. They went to abolish ICE. Yeah, of course. That's the Immigration and Customs Enforcement. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, well, when you've got 10 to 12 million in your personal bank account due to, you know, Uncle Soros, you're going to say anything. Exactly. It's either Uncle Soros or the Clintons. Exactly. I mean, I, I why am I not on this list? I would like <laughs> 10, 12 million. You know, um, I don't know. We could talk on the phone. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> for I, fun. I'll say anything for 10 to 12 million. <laughs> I know. And, and uh, you know, when they legalize marijuana in Missouri, you know, you can just fly here all the time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, that's why I tell everybody you don't come here often. <laughs> <laughs> we have a legalized marijuana. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. So anyway, what would we do without customs agents? I mean, everybody in the world would be pouring in here. We'd be India. We'd have like five feet to live in. Yeah. I'd have to let people move into my house. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a weird concept that just maybe it works in their mind, but it doesn't work in the real world. Sorry. No, it, it doesn't. And, you know, there's a little too much of the Soros Clinton, back to what you were talking about. I mean, remember that little tip we got our little dirty hands on about Eric Greitens, the former governor of Missouri? Right. How he was tied with Soros, and Soros had said he would get him out of that mess if he'd just resign as right. governor. And just to kind of reiterate the little mess, he had taken a photo of his girlfriend, partially naked. He's married, so, you know, that's why the girlfriend's a big deal. Supposedly, she didn't agree with it, but it was really her husband that didn't agree with it. I don't think she ever said she didn't agree to it. Her husband said that. Which is sort of a problem when you have a boyfriend and you have a husband. Right. Okay? <laughs> Nevertheless, the other thing he did, he had taken a list of country club members and sent them campaign donation requests. Oh, big deal. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I can't tell you how many lists I'm on that people take it. And, you know, I told you my pool guy does it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nevertheless, you know, supposedly Soros said, you step down, we'll get rid of it. Well, the next day, three or four hours later, there are no charges left. <laughs> I'm great. Now, you got to know that two years prior in 2016, this was the golden boy. The worst thing he put in his body was orange juice. Wow. He was a Rhodes Scholar, a former SEAL. I mean, a golden boy. But, but how quick? 
how quickly that comes down. Exactly. I'd like to know what's in his bank account right now. Hmm. Because what made it worth it? Because I was completely in his corner. I loved him. He was the first Jewish governor. I was excited about that. I, up to the last second, and I didn't mean the last second, the day before he stepped down, this Soros connection started making sense. Yeah, makes sense now. We'll see where it happens. We will keep our eye on Greitens. I'm sure it's not the last time we we mention it. No. Nope. Well, speaking of collusion, there's going to be some more colluding. Oh, great. Yeah. Trump is going to meet with Vladimir Putin for a summit in Helsinki, Finland. I'd like to go there. Anyway, it will take place on July 16th. So very soon. Right. And if you're going to Finland, that's a great time of year to go to Finland. Absolutely. I mean, how beautiful must it be there? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And the um, northern lights, amazing. Oh, yeah. And what do you think they're going to collude about? Um, Vodka and northern lights. I'm really not sure. (laughs) I'm not either. I'm hoping they talk about Hillary and have a whole ton of Hillary jokes, like around a campfire or something. They need to have that belly laugh going when they talk about Hillary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she practically had them dating. (laughs) Pretty much. We did an article on that, remember? (laughs) Yeah. It's hilarious on the Right Left Chronicles. Oh, please read that because it is one of our better hilarious little ditties. Yeah. You know, you wonder how, whether you like him or not, how does Trump get time to do everything he does? I mean, I think he must sleep 10 minutes a night. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're like all the politicians are actually robots and there's like five of them. <laughs> they got clones? Yeah, clones everywhere because, you know, I'll, I'll watch the news and, and Trudeau will be somewhere in India and the next day he's in Vancouver. And I'm like, well, how wow. did that happen, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, just a theory. They got rid of those really fast jets. What were, what were those really fast ones? Uh, the the, uh, the Concorde. Concorde, yeah. Yeah, Concorde. they got rid of those, so yeah. you can't you know, fly that fast. I don't know, but Trump, he does a lot. And I was looking for a relative and to hearing aids, okay? Uh-huh, okay. And they're very, very expensive in the United States, and your insurance does not cover it. Right. And so these guys will charge five, six, seven thousand dollars for one hearing aid. And you know, a lot of people have two ears. <laughs> so if you double that, now you you've got to think about technology. And you know, my iPhone does a lot and it costs too much money. Nevertheless, should a little hearing aid, technologically speaking, cost five times as much as my cell phone. Yeah, there, there's something a little bit fishy. I realize that, you know, they're really small and small technology costs money. I well, get that. Well, it does, but even the bigger ones are expensive. I mean, they're like three or 4000 So anyway, I, I ran across, I started getting these flyers about $799 for hearing aid, and I thought, wow. How did it drop so much? So I tell my family member, you better go get one now. It's cheaper. Right. You know? Nevertheless, I started thinking, why is it cheaper? Because that's what I do, as you well know. And extremely cheaper. (laughs) Extra. Yeah, this is crazy. And I started looking into it, and Trump, last August, signed a bill where hearing aids can now be sold on the open market, yet they are FDA approved. So Mm. they're regulated. But you don't have to buy them through the doctor anymore and pay an arm and a leg. It's kind of ironic because we heard nothing about it. In fact, I found yesterday after reading about the Hearing Aid Act where you can buy a set of hearing aids, and I do say a set, that means two, for $499. Wow. They're not just like two plastic funnels. No, no. This is like the real deal. deal. So this Hearing Aid Act in the United States, and I've always thought it was a little crazy that insurance or Medicare, even Medicaid, does not cover hearing aids. I mean, it's pretty important to hear. Right. Medically speaking, it's really important because you can misunderstand a lot of things or not hearing as a health risk in itself. Yeah, I, I got a little story about that. A friend of mine, her 86-year-old mother, got a phone call on her cable bill 
and she she's really hard of hearing and she didn't write down the right amount that she had to pay so she was $26 short on her bill and they suspended her service and to get ah. reconnected it would cost her over $400 oh my god with all the penalties yeah kind of a crazy st- and it all happened because she couldn't hear well, yeah, I mean, it's it's really crazy. I am, you know, because of the tumor surgery I have, I can't hear well. Right. Although I'm not a candidate for hearing aids because your ears will not, they need to ventilate if you are tumor prone. So I'm not a candidate. Nevertheless, the other day, my little granddaughter was here and I thought she said food and she said poop. <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole conversation was so far out of context. She's looking at me and I didn't find out till the next day how pertinent that was. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Something about somebody dropping food and she said somebody dropped food. <laughs> oh my oh my so, it's important uh, to hear <laughs> yes yes oh I, and I said it's okay i said nana's dropped food on herself before. <laughs> and i oh thought no. she's looking at me like she's three yeah so, she's, i mean like really <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> oh, too good, too good. This is starting to sound like an advertorial. We should get a hearing company to sponsor <laughs> we us. Should. We should because yeah, it is. And, yeah. Uh, but hooray for Trump for doing that. I mean, yeah. let the open market take care of price. I like that. Yeah. Good and story. when you when you do that, that's what you're doing. You're letting the market dictate price and service. So good job. Yep. Great. We are coming up on the United in the United States on Independence Day. Yeah, and we got Canada Day on Sunday. Okay, I thought I thought they were pretty close. Yeah. And it's I don't know about Canada Day, but Independence Day is a day we often think about the military. We think about freedom and our country. And um, you know, I've been working on a project with the hammer. Right. And what we've been doing, and it's 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 really exciting, is having people come to have dinner with us. And I'm not talking about our friends. I'm talking about going out of our comfort zone and asking people that seem interesting to come and have dinner. Cool. And uh, there'll be a book out about this around the holidays. Nice. Uh, but I cannot tell you how awesome this is. That's why I wanted to talk about it a little bit today. We uh, Tonight we are having a, a veteran who's a special forces hero, basically. Cool. And in light of Independence Day, I think it's kind of a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Pay it forward kind of idea. Exactly. Not only are you appreciating a veteran, but you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're having dinner, you're having some drinks and you're talking. You're not watching TV. You're not on the computer. And I, I can't tell you, this is our first veteran we've had, but this has been an absolutely fabulous experience. Great. You know, and it's about the food, the person, the drink, the stories. It, I highly recommend it. And I, I can't wait till the book's out because it's been much more rewarding than I would have ever thought possible. Cool. And I'm cool. cooking my tail off. <laughs> right on. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so, you know, think about a veteran. You know, if nothing else, buy them a hot dog. Yeah, totally agree with you there. And we don't always agree, but life's a journey, and we're all in this together. Happy Independence Day. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor, and Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and thanks for listening. Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins.